Hello, today I'd like to show you how I build my top bar beehives. Uh, the main item that I use is a 2 by 12 inch uh, construction grade uh, lumber. I have two pieces that I've pre-cut. Um, they're 19 inches uh, long and that'll cover the span of 17 and a half for my top and 10 inches across the bottom. Um, you want the bars, top bars when you make them to be 19 inches. That way they're interchangeable with a Langstroth hive if you uh, do determine that you want to change over or if you need to do a cut and chop with uh, Langstroth frames they will fit across your top bar. Uh, these will end up being the sides of the top bar hive. Um, I like to cut them less than 48 inches so that when you do go to make a top for the top bar hive there's room enough to use a half sheet of plywood and still have room to make it a telescoping cover. Also for the bottom I use number 8 hardware cloth which is a, a mesh. Um, just means that it has 8 holes per square inch on it and that's what I use across the bottom um, for the mites and other things so that when they fall they fall out of the hive. And let's go ahead and get started now. Just put the camera down. So I've gone ahead and screwed the one side down and what I wanted to show you here is I got the six screws in there to hold the sides of our top bar together. And the way I do it is on this side here I draw a line down and I flush up the outside edge with it and put in one screw and then line up this end with the line I draw down there as well so it, it makes a, a, a nice uh, guide to make sure that you have the same pitch on the sides uh, when you put both of the ends on there. So I leave these ears on here. It gives it more stability, keeps it from tipping uh, when I have it laid out. But there you have uh, the one end on. It's a 19 inch piece of that 2 by 12 uh, with uh, the overall length of uh, the 2 by 12 being 11 and a quarter after it is baked and processed. And then I have the other end to put down. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll pick up after. So with the other end on, using the same technique that's the front, we've got, I don't know if you can see that bubble or not. It's level. And then this is the back end. And that's pretty much the most of the work of your hive is getting this outer body done. Um, next we're going to go ahead and put the screen on the bottom and I will show you how to um, do the entrance I use and um, the top bars and telescoping cover. So now what we've got on the bottom here is the number 8 hardware cloth and all I'm doing is using a staple gun to secure it uh, into place and then you may have to uh, into place depending on how strong the spring is on your staple. So. so now with the finished number eight hardware cloth on the hive, a couple of things I wanted to show you is I brought it all the way to the end, all the way around. I've closed all the gaps and where I had overlap, I made sure that there wasn't enough room for bees or wasps or anything else to get in and out of there. Um, if you're starting a new hive, you don't want uh, a weaker hive or a package to have to defend a great big opening in the bottom, uh, especially if you decide to put your hive up on legs 
or um, like I've stated in other videos, I plan to lift mine up in the summer when it's hot to allow more ventilation from the bottom. If this is not a good uh, seal all the way around, uh, the bees will also have to defend that as an entrance and that's more resources spent trying to guard the hive where they could be out foraging and collecting pollen and nectar. The next part of the hive you'll have to build is the top bars and follower board. Um, this is a hive that I've completed for the most part that we plan to put Russian hybrids in. Um, the top bars you want to cut to 19 inches and uh, so that they will be interchangeable with the Langstroth. I've cut these top bars down. This is from a, a previous top bar I had. You're also going to want to put um, a piece of starter trim on here. This is just a little corner piece. I don't know, I think it's a quarter of an inch and we've stapled it down. And what you'll do is put um, melt beeswax either with like a um, a soldering torch or a soldering iron or you can even use a lighter if you need to put the the beeswax just drip it across here so that they it'll smell like beeswax and that'll soak in and it'll give them a good foundation to start their comb down um, once you have all the top bars you're going to need at least 10 to start um, I believe I have about 20 here you're just going to use um, one by twos uh, that's what we've been using and had good luck with. Uh, the one by twos are not actually two inches wide. It's about one and five eighths of an inch is what you're looking for for a brood comb. And um, to center this trim piece across the middle and that's where they'll start. For the follower board, the follower board is just a, a false back that follows the, um, the top bars and let's just say that we had 10 bars in and instead of opening up this whole back of the hive we're going to put our follower board which is just pretty much a cutout of the end pieces without the uh, just a little bit narrower and I've cut a notch in the top so that the bees can get into the dead space behind the follower board I like to do that for feeders and such so that they're not um, exposed when a bee for beehive first gets started and that just snugs up against the top bars. Makes a pretty good seal. And still leaves room for the bees to come through. An eighth of an inch, or three eighths of an inch is what bees need to, to move. That's the bee space. If they have three eighths of an inch, they can get through. The gaps on our number eight hardware cloth are only about a quarter of an inch and they can't get through. So that's why they don't have to end up defending this area below the hive because the bees can't get through it. Um, so once you have your top bars and your follower board in place, um, we need to talk about the entrance. Um, some people like to use a, a slot entrance and uh, other people like to use holes. I'm, uh, I'm following a uh, something that Mr. Phil Chandler uh, started and it's called a periscope hive and what I mean a periscope entrance and what it actually is is this is just like a little box that's got about a half inch gap all the way through it and then the entrance holes are up high back here so the bees actually climb in on the outside down here climb up and come in through the entrance holes here. This does a couple of things. Um, the biggest thing I like is it prevents drafts that come straight through the hive. Uh, the periscope entrance blocks that. The second thing is, is if you have a low entrance down here, two things can happen. As the bees come in, anything that falls down off the combs that they've built has the potential to fall on the bees that are coming in. Uh, secondly, if any bees die over winter and fall and block a slot entrance down here, it makes it harder for the bees to get out. If there's a, a big overwinter kill, and there might be so many bees there, they might not even know that there's a way out. So um, this is the preferred method that I like, the high holes with the periscope method. The last thing you're going to need 
is the telescoping cover. And what I have done, most of the wood I got for this hive is, is uh, salvaged wood, so these are not actual one by twos per se. But um, the hive top is just a piece of 3 eighths inch plywood that uh, was given to me by the neighbor. And I've put, for just right now, put little pieces of trim up here for catches on the front and back. And what I'll do, do is just to slide in a, this just keeps the water from dripping down between the uh, top bars. It also uh, adds a, a layer of insulation. Once you get that telescoping edge on here and get something that's substantial, you can actually, what I found, is turn these top bars up on end, just a couple, like so, and that creates a dead space. The bees can come up in here, uh, get stuff to eat if you put, uh, if you're the kind that uses uh, pollen patties or uh, uh, a baggy feeder, or just if you want the extra uh, space for ventilation. It also works as insulation from the heat and the cold. Uh, in the wintertime, you'll want that dead area up above uh, for uh, the condensed air, the warm, moist air to get up there. It uh, is able to come up into the dead area. If it does freeze or condense and drip, it's not direct, dripping directly on your bees. Um, so, for uh, building a top bar hive, that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and try and put the lid back on this thing with one hand. Just give me a moment. And there you have it. That's how I make a top bar beehive. Thanks.